All right, so Ayurveda is the most ancient medical system on the planet, if you're not aware. It is an herbal-based system which originated in India over 10,000 years ago. Ayurveda has been known in the West for about 50 years. Vyada Priyanka is authentic. Vaid <laughs> Sorry with these words. <laughs> Vaidya, or a healer from 725-year-old lineage of women Ayurvedic healers. 725 years. Her title, Vaida, Vaida means healer or doctor. Her lineage has about 75, 77 women Vaidas all over the world. These are some of the strongest women you will ever meet. Her training started at age 11, and she is a lifelong vegan. A movie named Mistress of Spice is loosely based off her life and her talents. She is a very well-known vegan chef, and you can check out her videos on YouTube, Om Cuisine. Although she is headquartered in the Silicon Valley, she travels all over the world. In a month's time, she could be lecturing and giving healing consult consultations in 10 to 12 cities. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce you to Vyaja Priyanka, everybody. Give it up for her. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Matthew. And I'm sorry for the vegan tongue twister of my name. <laughs> anyway, so lovely to meet you. My name is Vaidya Priyanka, and I'm from a 725-year-old lineage of female vegan Ayurvedic healers. So when I was asked to speak this time, I have a quite a long association with the San Francisco Vegetarian Society. And this time Art came to me and said, we need to do something different. We need to speak about brain health. So I thought, okay, let's come up with something based on the tenets of Ayurveda and Kaya Kalpa. So the science of Kaya Kalpa is part of Ayurveda and it is about anti-aging or rather aging gracefully on your terms. And the system of medicine that we practice is of course Ayurvedic in origin, but my personal practice is from integrative medicine. So it has a lot of the disciplines and the sciences of the Vedic knowledge of the East and the Western supplementation and other modalities present in the West for a very comprehensive system of healing. So, even my cuisine is called OM, which is Authentic, Universal, Meditative. So, this is my topic, improving your FMC, your focus, memory, and creativity. So, before we commence, I would like all of us to center a little bit. So, sit comfortably in your chairs, keep your backs straight, make sure your telephone is turned off. And let's get into a really beautiful space of surrendering to this beautiful knowledge. Gently close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and slowly breathe out. Breathe in again, and out. One more time, take a deep breath in, and breathe out. This time, when you take a deep breath in, let's do the ancient sound of Om. Make sure the sound comes from deep, from the base of your gut. Om. One more time, breathe in. I want to commence my presentation with something really simple, 
which all of us have probably heard millions and millions of times, considering we live in this valley. Brain healthy foods. So I'm just going to go over some really simple brain healthy foods. Just write these down and then we'll go into the real magical stuff. Berries, self-explanatory, green leafy vegetables, all different types of green leafy vegetables. Feel free to take pictures, so much easier. Dark chocolate, the darker the better, at least 69, the magical number. Extra virgin coconut oil, rosemary. Rosemary is contradicted, contraindicated during pregnancy. Every other time you can have rosemary as part of your diet. And turmeric, the wonderful golden powder. These are the things that in my lineage we say to make sure you say no to. If you're focused on any aspect of focus, memory, and creativity, you absolutely need to say no to caffeine. I know there are so many conflicting views of caffeine. It depends upon the month of the year and the year of the decade. When the East Coast schools and the West Coast schools seem to have this war going on. Is caffeine good? Is caffeine bad? The truth is, caffeine is extremely acidic to the human body and your brain works well when the environment is alkaline. So it is really important to eliminate this completely. It just creates a fake high in your body. Does it rev up metabolism? It absolutely does. But does it do anything beneficial for the brain in the long term? Absolutely not. Because your brain is mostly made up of water. And if something acidic enters into your body, automatically it is going to affect the way that your brain functions. Eggplant, aubergine or brinjal as it is called is perhaps the worst vegetable you can have for brain health. In Ayurveda it's considered tamasic, something that induces and creates lethargy in your system and in your body. In fact, sometimes there is an ancient proverb, they say that, you know, uh, don't behave like an eggplant, like if in case you don't really um, have um, the right type of brain working at the right time, so don't behave like an eggplant. Dairy creates a lot of mucus in the body and many of us have spoken about it over the years and I know that all of you are veterans to that knowledge and dairy when it creates that mucus or kabam or kapha as it is called in Ayurveda it automatically induces laziness within the body which prevents the brain from functioning optimally. Alcohol again very self-explanatory red meat. Now what happens is when you consume some red meat, right, all of the attention and the circulation has to be in your stomach for at least 40 to 48 hours. So the amount of blood that is actually going into your brain is not going to be high. So that automatically inhibits the way that your brain would function cigarettes. Now, when people say nicotine, once in a while when I, when I smoke, they say to me, when they come to see me as patients, I think better. In fact, my thinking is much better when I smoke. There are those who tell me that they go to the loo much better when they smoke. There are many people who think that they digest better when they smoke. All this is um, just lack of awareness in my opinion because cigarettes cannot contribute to anything good because the nicotine directly goes into your lungs. Your lungs, very simply put, are responsible for the way oxygen is absorbed all through your body. So if this oxygen is tainted with nicotine, how is it going to be beneficial to your brain? Simple. Too much multitasking. Now we all know that women are much more natural multitaskers than men. Uh, women can do a million things at the same time and behave as though or as if we are doing just one thing once. But the truth is women can get Alzheimer's or dementia if we keep working on this overdrive all through our lives. 
it can be extremely taxing and exhausting not just to your brain but your entire nervous system that's why we call it a nervous breakdown so as wonderful as it is that we have this God-given natural perhaps genetic talent or gender-based talent of multitasking go slow sometimes pause a little bit and give some rest to this multitasking a sedentary lifestyle people who do not get enough oxygen into their systems fresh oxygen by way of exercise walking getting fresh air automatically have issues to a large extent with focus and their memory and their creativity you cannot have heightened creativity very imaginative thinking if you are going to be sedentary when you surround yourself with negative people what really happens is that you really slice out an entire gamut of possibilities away from your life because you're going to be falling into this trap of negativity and it says very clearly in the old tenets of kaya kalpa is that if you're surrounding yourself with extremely positive people automatically your creativity will improve manifold and you would be in that kind of realm of consciousness that you will be able to think of varied possibilities towards your de overall development and focus abilities when it comes to boring routines like let's say every day you wake up at the exact same time you eat the exact same thing for breakfast you meet the exact same people what is really going to happen is that you're going to become very boring dull and predictable so there are a few things in life that you want to keep changing as much as possible every single day add something new into your life something exciting and it is very well known that people who make plans for like say the next week or the next month people who plan for a vacation already are going to set themselves up for a beautiful beautiful time so I'm going to be going over some Ayurvedic and Kaya Kalpa remedies for optimal brain health at any age. Please do remember that if you're under the care of a medical doctor or a, or a health practitioner, please take their advice before you start adding these things onto your diet. Ginkgo leaf, I normally recommend 120 milligrams once a day. Now, ginkgo biloba is a very beautiful herb it has plenty of components which increase your blood circulation it improves memory for many of my patients who suffer from dementia and it works to enhance their absolute mental performance now this has its roots from Southeast Asia years and years ago and this is something that I recommend on a regular basis because I have noticed that people who take this regularly even if there is a genetic history in their families in their ancestral health of developing Alzheimer's or dementia this absolutely escapes them so this is something to consider Makab I know maca has been touted for other benefits as well, but it is extremely good for your mental health. I would recommend taking maca in the morning. You want to take maca root powder, perhaps a teaspoon a day. You have to make sure that you go through all of your prescription medications with your doctor because there are some medications that are contraindicated when you are using maca. I personally think that maca is something that is going to be changing the way that humans perform and live and thrive in this world. It's really good for endurance, it's good for strength, it preserves your energy and it kind of helps ease your mental tension. So if there's a lot of mental tension happening in your life, maca is a kind of a go-to, really does help. 
dragon's blood. It actually does look like that. And half, I mean, it's time for Halloween, I'm 30 days early. Um, so this is kind of native to the Amazon um, rainforest. And it is such a beautiful, beautiful herb. And I don't recommend more than half an ounce a day. There is a certain mentality uh, which I've noticed more so in the West than I do in the East. They believe that if you eat a lot of something, it can be even more good for you, right? But too much of a good thing is also bad. So don't exceed more than half an ounce a day. This really um, helps you take care of issues which are related to Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. And if you have a family history of dementia, you want to make sure that you definitely do have this. There is a lot of degeneration that happens during the course of our lives, especially following a traumatic event. And dragon's blood can effectively help ease this. Ginseng. Now, um, ginseng also is used for a lot of other benefits, especially with male stamina and fertility. And I'm a huge proponent of ginseng. I even like it in tincture, but if you were to get it in capsules, 1200 milligrams per day is something that I would recommend. I believe that ginseng has been used as a remedy for memory loss and aging for several years. And it also works as a fantastic energy booster and it decreases blood pressure as well. Many people who have a chance of having high blood pressure do have an issue with their memory over the long term. So if you do consume ginseng, you will realize that not only does the blood pressure come down, but over a period of time, your memory improves incredibly. Brahmi, this is one of my favorite herbs. This is from the Ayurvedic subtext, and it's called Bacopa Monieri. And Brahmi can be consumed even up to 200 milligrams per day, but if you're just starting out, about 100 milligrams is more than sufficient. It is really beautiful as an herb because it has a lot of beautiful chemical components that not just help a person's memory, but it can also help your digestion. It can help your lungs. So people who are suffering from different types of bronchial health or asthma, this is your go-to herb. Okay, so let's start talking about some things which are really important now. A work day. When you think of a work day, most people think of a work day as something that is going to exhaust their memory completely. They're going to be like, oh my God, I have to go and I have to focus. I have to think, I have to be effective, I have to be creative and all of that. So the amount of pressure that develops before you even approach your work day is quite tangible. So when you really think about how do I pass? How do I get that work day to be the most effective work day for me? I would recommend this technique, which is called the Pomodoro technique. For those of you who are not familiar with this, this Pomodoro technique is quite loosely based on a Kayakalpa technique. And what that Kayakalpa technique is as follows. It actually starts from the previous night. So before you go to bed, you should set up your tasks which you have created for yourself the previous night itself. And then from that list, before you start your day, please do create a task list for that day. After you do that, set a timer for 25 minutes right in the beginning of the day for at least four or five times. And in that 25 minutes, do not get distracted by anything, unless of course it's an emergency. 25 minutes of focused attention. Then you take a break. 
and that break needs to be for five minutes. You either get up, jump a little bit, do a stretch, close your eyes for five minutes, something which causes full, complete and absolute rest for five minutes. Then after every fourth break, take a longer break for between 15 to 30 minutes. Please remember that when you take that break after the fourth 25 minute module, you should not take a nap. A lot of people have a tendency to take a nap. Please don't do that. So what we are really doing is that you're forcing your brain to work with focused attention for a set of 25 minutes. People who follow the Pomodoro technique have been seen to be extremely more effective as people functioning beautifully at their work, coming up with more creative options. It's just a phenomenal idea to really try for at least 42 days before you say, oh, I don't think it works, right? So 42 days. And it's such a beautiful way for your brain to automatically start working that soon after a period of time, you would not need to set up that 25 minute timer. Okay, this is another technique that my grandmother always has believed in. She calls this a generic parts technique. And how the generic parts technique works is as follows. At least once a day, think of an object, any object, and try thinking of what it really takes to make that object. So let's take an example of a chair. Okay, so if I look at this chair, I'm going to think of, oh, there is some metal, there are some screws, there's plastic, there are these little trowels, you know, all of these different aspects. You know, maybe this part came from China, the other one from Philippines, something from Milwaukee, I don't know. But my brain is thinking about all of the different aspects that surround one object. So that's what is called a generic parts technique. Here, right here, there are these, you know, little things in a thing in a tailor shop. There is a center front, a side front, a pocket flap, and so on. So when you do this for any item during about six to nine months, you'll notice that automatically you've started thinking extremely differently. And when you start thinking like this, you have a more widespread way of thinking. It's almost like what, who, when, where, why, how. You're going to be using all of these different questions to be having a much better overall comprehension, if you will, of what that subject is. So as far as brain boosting goes, I'm a um, big fan of creating color in one's life. If you really have to boost your brain, you have to work on all aspects of your brain. Now when you think about all aspects of your brain, usually people say, oh, I'm right-brained, I'm only creative. I'm left-brained, I'm only analytical or logical. The truth is, everybody has the same brain. What really contributes to a person's intelligence is the amount of convolutions you have in your brain. So more the number of convolutions, more the intelligence, right? But what happens in the society we live in, we are contributing to the convulsions and not the convolutions. So we are behaving extremely haphazard, sudden, abrupt. We are not really going with the ebb and flow, the natural mechanism. And we are not heightening all of these components in an equal way. So on this brain here, there are four, five colors actually. So there is a green, yellow, red, a dark blue, and an aquamarine blue. So I want all of you to identify five different things that you love to do in life okay so just write any of the five things that you love doing so in my case it would be I love seeing patients I love singing I love to cook I love designing jewelry and I love writing poetry now if I really think about each of these tasks though the world might consider them as a right or a left-brained activity, namely creative or logical, 
the truth is all activities do need creativity and logic to some degree now with painting yes you do need more creativity but there is a logical approach to how paint is applied on a canvas or watercolor is applied on paper how much water do you use what kind of number of um, the paint brush do you have to use how much control does there have to be in your hand so there is a lot of logical process right so when you identify those five things make sure that you at least work for your monetary satisfaction and requirement with at least two of them and make sure you do all five of them every single week of your life if you do this not only are you going to be a happier person you're also going to be contributing in a natural way to society and this natural way is what we really need we don't need people who are forced to do things see I, I come from India originally right and in India how it works is maybe not anymore but when I was a little girl you either have to be a doctor a lawyer an accountant um, run a quickie mart um, I, I don't know what else or, or maybe a software engineer right these days but there are other things that people can do rather than fitting into something that your parents have to do or your parents want you to do or your parents did not get a chance to do and they want to kind of live again vicariously through you right you want to come to terms with who you want to become so with all of my adopted children I got them to do whatever fueled them whatever made them happy did I contribute to them by introducing some level of logic and creativity absolutely but I let them choose similarly when we are all much older in life it is time for us to really choose from where we come from what is that deep need want and happiness in your life that will make your brain boost to this amazing capacity and memory is never going to be a problem after that I always recommend handwriting I heard recently that penmanship has been removed off schools that's very interesting um, I always think that one of the best things that ever happened in my life was handwriting penmanship and also the second thing that happened really good in my life was driving and I'm thinking without handwriting and driving where would most of us be in life we need to get where, where we need to go we need to be able to write a check or a thank you note so please practice your handwriting most people who do not write are definitely getting closer to dementia and Alzheimer's because when you write not only are you helping with the right side of your brain you are sharpening the left side of your brain so handwriting at least one page a day needs to be a mandatory thing for everybody oh I just love these mister things and the miss things so um, daydreaming now I know that usually when we hear the word daydream it was shunned and looked down upon at least in the 60s and 70s it was like how dare you daydream are you crazy are you doing drugs people would say these things right because they would say oh daydreaming is such a bad thing the point is that if you are daydreaming effectively in the sense you're telling your brain yes now I give you permission to daydream five minutes six minutes perhaps seven minutes and this daydream can be about anything absolutely anything so you're sitting in the middle of your work day and you decide to create a story a dream a dream but have a start time and a stop time you will notice that when you distract yourself completely on purpose with your own volition it's very easy for you to come back to the task at hand with a much better creative solution so uh, projected streamlined you know timed daydreaming is actually considered a good thing meditation so I've been a TMR like most of you 
for many, many years, since I was 10 years old. And I think it's one of the best things that ever happened to me. Those of you who don't know TM, tm.org has a lot of information. It's one of the world's most researched techniques of meditation. If somebody were to ask me, what would your life be like if you were not a TMer? I really don't know what to say because this is the technique which is a real fallback thing in my life. I don't get jet lagged because I TM. Um, I have unbelievable amount of energy from morning to night. Uh, sometimes, you know, what people would call sleep deprivation because sometimes I might get just two or three hours of sleep a night. It's still very restful sleep because the TM technique helps me get into REM much faster. So I would definitely urge you to check it out. In its basic sense, it's just 20 minutes twice daily. And many wonderful people are TM meditators, everybody from Ellen DeGeneres to lots of funny people actually. So Jerry Seinfeld, they've all been doing it for many, many years. And what TM has done for me is that it never lets me forget what I want to remember. And it helps me forget what I better forget very easily and does not allow me to go back to that space so that I can maintain this beautiful equilibrium in my consciousness and with my awareness of the world. Yoga. Now yoga is not just um, a series of different positions for the body. Yoga is union. It is the beautiful union between your mind, your body, and your spirit. In fact, that's what yoga means. And when you are in that yogic state, which can happen with meditation during yoga, or when you are doing something that you love to do, you can be in yoga. You can be in that bliss state. Most people who practice yoga or some level of flexibility in their lives every single day are less hurried and they pace themselves very well and they walk around in this planet with a certain degree of authority and conviction and happiness. And I strongly recommend a practice of some sort of yoga or flexibility technique in your lives because it lubricates your joints and by that process of lubricating your joints, it takes care of lubricating your brain. This is something that my family has been known for. It's called marma, like karma with an alphabet M and marma is a whole bunch of these beautiful points. There are about 108 main ones, 107 that are strewn all over the body, and the 108th being the mind. And this technique is a combination of your nervous system, your skeletal system, and your muscular system, the actual points where all these three things meet. So Marma can help people with anything from autoimmune conditions to brain-related conditions, children with pediatric issues, digestive issues, fertility issues. It is a magic system of healing. And not just with Marma, you should have a wellness protocol every single week of your life in some capacity. And once this wellness for your body happens, there automatically is wellness for your mind. There are many people who feel hurried and rushed and say, oops, I forgot, right? And I take pen to paper. I don't really um, survive on a list. You know, there are many people who have this list on their phones. I always think, what if I don't have a charger or my phone dies? Then what's going to happen? So I take a pen to paper and I make a list of everything that I believe I want to do, want to remember, um, you know, want to get done. And I remember that and I do it immediately because then it keeps my mind free to think about other things rather than saying, oh, I have to do this, I have to do this, right? I, I don't like rushed thought. The rushed thought really interferes with clarity. I've spoken about water a great deal in the past and I really would like to remind you that those people who are not hydrated adequately enough 
are the ones that suffer from issues pertaining to clarity of mind and when you don't have good water hydration in your body not to be consumed I mean not to be confused with medicinal teas this is just water water in the way that it exists don't drink ice cold water drink room temperature water or warm water at all times because we are warm blooded creatures this water is about 80 to 90 percent of your body your bones your brain all of it is mostly water so when we don't drink enough water we automatically are going to feel that slump unnecessarily many people think B vitamins are going to resolve that problem it will if you have drunk enough water and you're still feeling that way but mostly most things in your life you can resolve just by drinking an adequate amount of water so this is a recent study they found that people who get enough sleep you can really be more creative if you get better quality of sleep and there is this conversation that's around about rituals you really want to have a ritual about going to bed turn off all of your devices for an hour before you go to bed no checking email no answering text messages it's your time and create a ritual you know if you do a face protocol do that or you know you want to wear your socks or something whatever you do you know putting your lavender oil whatever it is but create a ritual around your sleeping time make sure you have a really clear sense of calm before you actually even get to bed make sure you don't have any clutter around you people who have clutter in their lives in their relationships in their homes underneath the bed all of them are going to have compromised sleep and when you have compromised sleep you're going to have issues with your brain I've always believed in this I believe that laughter is an instant vacation when people don't have happiness and laughter and sweetness in their life there is a lot of dragging going on in a physical sense as well as for your cells your cells want to be looking like little smiley emoji cons right they really want to be happy all the time and then um, yeah just like the gentleman there the way he like that yeah so you really want to be like really vibrant beautiful feeling happy feeling good so when the, one of these cells gets really sad and there is mucus in your body and all the other cells get impacted by the mucus because the mucus is fueling the sad cell right that's how cancer happens it's the rapid multiplication of sad cells in the presence of mucus so if you really want to stay away from anything that is going to harm your body have a sense of humor a really good one those of you who don't listen to music it is a good thing to start I think even if you can't sing in your mind you can still sing in the shower people who are good with music even for just three minutes a day have much more optical uh, optimal brain health so this is an important thing to have a proper work-life balance you need to have enough time for exercise your community your family for meditation and think positively all the time I'm going to open the audience out for Q&A please put your hands up so that it's easier yes go ahead no eggplant yes eggplant is a very um, tamasic vegetable it really creates a lot of inflammation in the body it is not just uh, bad for people with arthritis it's bad for people who are um, kind of kind of compromise their brain health you know it's a really kind of a mean vegetable let's just call it a mean vegetable it shouldn't be on your plate definitely not in your body yes
Okay, um, very good questions. The first one, of course, you wanted to know what TM stands for. It's for Transcendental Meditation, and you can get more information tm.org, like T for tomatoes, M for mother, dot org. And uh, why no ice water? It's because we're warm-blooded creatures. So if we were lizards and cold-blooded creatures, ice water would be just fine because it would kind of emulate the same body temperature. And that'd be okay. But since we're warm-blooded creatures, ice-cold water is very shocking to your system and it affects your digestive fire or your agni. And that's the reason why ice-cold water is not a good idea. Yes. Okay, so um, his question was about the supplements I recommended. So like I was saying earlier, these supplements are suggestions which have stood the test of time, right? So your particular set of supplements that you might require for your brain might be a combination of all of them or just a few of them. So for which you would need a Nadi Pariksha or a pulse diagnosis. The whole idea with Ayurvedic medicine is that it is not one size fits all. You know, I always say it's not like a t-shirt from Walmart, but it is haute couture, you know, it's specifically for you. And it's as individual as your thumbprint. So we could talk offline more about this and I'd be more than happy to talk to you more. Yes, go ahead. Chocolate does have caffeine, but um, dark chocolate even though it has caffeine, what it really does for you in small increments, you're not going to be eating an entire bar. So let's say you take your index finger and your index finger has, your pointer finger, has three quarters, right? So where the first line ends, if you were to just consume dark chocolate for that amount, every day, sublingually, under your tongue, post lunch or post dinner, it's medicine. Anything beyond that is an indulgence. <laughs> so. a, cup of, a cup of green tea is fine because it also does have catechins. It's really good. But I don't recommend green tea beyond 4 p.m. at night because it can um, affect the way that you sleep. Yes. Yes. It's amazing. I'm from Kerala. My God, it's like our drug. <laughs> So MTC is like a brain octane. Coconut oil is like a lubricant for the entire body. It depends on the person again, just like his question. It depends on the person. For some patients, I recommend only extra virgin coconut oil, but for some people, I recommend a concentrated dosage. It would be like turmeric versus curcumin. All turmeric has curcumin, but a more standardized, concentrated extract of curcumin is recommended for some patients based on the condition that they have. So it's, it's like that. It's, a very, it's not a subtle difference. It is quite a blatant difference. But that choice would be depending upon the patient we are talking about. Because everybody's doing the bullet coffee now, huh? <laughs> uh, why don't you try it with coconut water and matcha green tea powder instead? It, it, it'll, do something, it'll do something even more different and magical for you, rather than the bullet coffee, all right. And the advantage with that, what I just recommended to you, it gets rid of lines on your face. Not that you have too many, but I'm just saying. <laughs> just, it, it's like, mm. Lovely. It's like a delicious, it's like a face mask from the inside, you know, it's really fun. And what it does for your brain, of course, and you sprout like a chia pet, which is good also. <laughs> yes. She had, had one more question, sorry, excuse me. On Marma, yes. So he, what he, uh, it's medium chain, um, I'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. I just want to talk about, address this marma thing in for a second. So, so MCT is medium chain triglycerides. I just want to tell you that for a second. So it's just something which is present in coconut oil alongside lauric acid. So, um, 
So marma, very simply put, is a way in which pressure, along with the tenets of yantra, tantra, and mantra, creates healing for your body. Mantra is through sound, yantra is through copper totems and gold and other things, and tantra is the technique that is employed. So with the right alignment, we can make your body function the way that it has to, rather than the way it is. Yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yes, there was a question right there. Someone's, yes, go ahead. It's very similar to acupressure. The difference is acupressure has 365 meridian points. The truth is traditional lineage marma has more than 87,000 points. So we're just talking about 108 of them because they're just the main ones, right? But there are these little nuances and the intricacies that happen in the body. And in my practice, we deal with a lot of people with learning issues, fertility issues, uh, people who have digestive disorders, autoimmune conditions, like systemic lupus, right? Can be cured completely with marma. And it is non-invasive. The uh, medication is in the oil, so it is transdermally put into the body uh, with the application and the right type of pressure. And we completely remove the whole idea of the liver because it's going through the transdermal process rather than being taken orally. Where, so you can bypass the liver pretty much. Yeah, there was a question on the side, yes. What is my take on? Uh, I'm going to have to just address that in a second because that's going to be more detail. Uh, there was a question back there. Okay, so I, I do recommend definitely plant-based milk more than animal protein. And um, as far as your eyesight is concerned, there should be other ways in which we can help with your eyesight as opposed to just soy-based. Um, I think that soy should be restricted. It does create more estrogen in the body, which has a whole gamut of other issues. So I'd be more than happy to talk offline about that with you. There was a question here? Um, so dragon's blood, you know, is a really good idea to really help internal parasites. And once internal parasites are taken care of, you automatically, there are other compounds which work much better with the brain. I guess I'm going to have to stop because the next presenter is on. So I'm going to put my information here. You can follow me on Instagram. And this is our information and I'll be available for questions. Thank you so much.